Landlords, what is going to happen now? The other day, Rishi Sunak told us that a snap election is going to take place on the 4th of July, which opens up a whole can of worms for the UK property market. It's definitely going to have some short-term effects on prices, regardless of who wins. And we all know that the Labour Party has had some strong opinions on rental reform over the last few years. And frankly, landlords are scared. Over the past week, our Sunday Times column has been absolutely flooded, with people asking what this election could mean for landlords and for the UK property market as a whole. So in this video, I'm going to shed some light on exactly what's happened and what the short and long-term effects of the election might be. And at the end, I'll give you my personal opinion on the matter. And please keep in mind that despite owning a property company, I am both a landlord and a tenant, so I do understand the argument on both sides. So let's start with the most obvious and immediate impact of this snap election. When the election was called, there were only a few days for any outstanding bills to be waived through. One important bill affecting property did make it through, and we'll come to that in a minute. But one arguably even more important one didn't, and that is the Renters' Reform Bill. The Renters' Reform Bill was the big piece of legislation that was supposed to transform the rental sector. Not only did it promise to do away with no-fault evictions, it would also mean that tenancies ran indefinitely rather than for a fixed term. It would introduce a national property registration scheme and a whole lot more. When the election was called, the bill was being debated in the House of Lords and was expected to become law over the next few months. But Parliament shut down early to start campaigning and the bill failed. Yes, the Rental Reform Bill, which has been the subject of so much furious debate on both sides, is dead. So why didn't it make it? given that it was a conservative policy and the Labour Party were desperate to see rental reform. Well, the rumour is that the Labour Party were happy to wave it through, but the Conservatives decided against it. So why would that happen? Well, it could be that some Conservative MPs never wanted rental reform to happen in the first place, or because they know that when it does happen, there will inevitably be short-term chaos and they want that problem to be associated with Labour rather than themselves. But I guess we'll never know. In any case, the next government, whoever it is, will need to start again. And later in the video, I'll describe how that's likely to happen and what it will mean for landlords. Still, one vital bill for the property market did make it through and will become law. And that is the leasehold reform bill. This means that very soon, some changes will come into law that should be positive for anyone who owns a leasehold property. The first of those changes is that lease extensions will now be longer. The owners of both houses and flats will now be able to extend their leases by 990 years. The second change is that it will now become easier and potentially cheaper to extend short leases. That's because the requirement that you've owned the property for two years before you can start the lease extension process is being removed, as is the concept of something called marriage value, which made the extension of leases more expensive once they dropped below 80 years in length. And the third positive in this bill is the requirement for there to be more transparency around service charges and a ban on managing agents bumping up the cost of insurance by taking big commissions. Now, all of this is positive, but there is one big change that had been talked about but didn't make it in, which is a cap on existing ground rents. Since 2022, it's been illegal to charge ground rents on new leases. So if you're buying a new flat today, no ground rent will ever be payable. But for leases created before 2022, ground rents are common and they can have nasty clauses, which means the price doubles every 10, 20 or 30 years. The Conservatives have previously talked tough about this, at times saying they wanted to abolish leasehold completely and at others saying they wanted to cancel all existing ground rents. This would have been controversial though, because the rights to receive ground Ground rent have been bought by big investors and pension funds who might have mounted a legal challenge if the government suddenly wiped out their income stream. So in the end, this was too big a change to push through in those last few days of Parliament. But now Parliament has shut down, a couple of short-term changes will start affecting the property market between now and polling day. Firstly, if you've been hoping for a cut in interest rates, you're going to be disappointed. There was a possibility that the Bank of England would cut the base rate when they meet in June, because inflation has been falling quickly back towards target. But now there is virtually no chance that will happen. That's not because the election changes anything in terms of inflation, but just because making this change before an election would leave the bank open to accusations of political motives. It might seem like they were helping the current government to make it look like their plans were working. So now there will almost certainly be no cut in rates until after the election, when the Bank of England next meets in August. This means that mortgage rates are unlikely to get any cheaper over the next couple of months because the base rate won't change and lenders probably won't make many changes to their product range until they know the outcome of the election. And lenders won't be the only ones sitting back to see what happens. The property market tends to freeze up in the run-up to an election. People put their moves on hold and wait to see what happens. So if you're trying to sell a property right 
now, you're out of luck because things will probably go quiet for a while. And this slowdown in activity is negative for property prices too. So Rishi has actually done the property market a favor by having a short run up to polling day because it means the market won't be paralyzed for that long. But the real question of course is what happens after the election? Well, if Rishi's gamble pays off and the conservatives win, we can assume that everything will carry on pretty much the same as before. The renters reform bill can be revived in basically its previous form and on we go. But the much more likely scenario of course is that a Labour government comes to power. So what can we expect from them if they do? Well, the big question for landlords is around rental reform. As I've said, the previous bill is dead. So they'd have no choice but to start again and take a new bill all the way through the parliamentary process from scratch. But this is something they could fast track if they wanted to. Angela Rayner has previously pledged to end no-fault evictions within 100 days. So there's nothing to stop them from quickly whipping up something very similar to what we already had and then pushing it through fast. But Keir Starmer, in a speech recently, announced a list of six first steps if they come to power and housing didn't appear. So we don't know just how quickly it will happen. Whenever it happens though, it will happen at some point and you'd certainly bet on the Labour version being more tenant friendly than the Conservative version of rental reform that we had before. This could mean longer notice periods for tenants when a landlord is selling the property, for example. They could also build on the leasehold reform that's now been started, potentially by capping or eliminating existing ground rents. Alternatively, they could do away with leasehold completely and push an alternative form of ownership called commonhold, which already exists in law but is barely ever used. These are both things that they've said they'd do in the past, but in the end, it just comes down to a case of priority because of course they'll have far more than just housing on their agenda. So that's what may happen. But I promised you my opinion on all of it. And let me first say that I won't be voting for anyone this time around, and I didn't last time either. So I've got no particular ax to grind here. Ultimately, whoever wins, I just don't think it's really gonna make that much difference. I know from speaking to many, many landlords that they are terrified by the prospect of a Labour government. But if you look at what's happened over recent years, most of the housing policies that the Conservatives have brought forward, including the pledge to ban no fault evictions, were originally Labour policies anyway. I just don't see that big a difference between the two when it comes to housing. We were going to get rental reform either way. It's just that the Labour version might involve longer notice periods and less of a transition. And there will inevitably be chaos when it first happens. But again, that was always going to be the case. It's true that some groups are asking for more serious measures like rent control and even paying tenants when they're asked to leave. And it's true that these groups are more closely connected with the Labour Party. But ultimately, while there will be a lot of noise in the run-up to an election, no incoming government is going to be blind to the fact that whether they like it or not, private landlords are currently needed. So call me naive, and I know I'll be called that and a lot worse in the comments, but I see life going on pretty much as it was before. So with all this uncertainty at the moment, how can you be sure that an investment is going to be safe and profitable in the future? Well, check out this video next, where I explain how the experts analyze property deals.